Today we're covering RDP tables and why it's worth understanding them. Vamanos! If you're here to see how to use tables for altitude diving, head to this timestamp. And also, if you want to learn more about altitude diving, check out our full video linked in the description below. I'll also talk about nitrox dive tables at the end of the video, so let's get to it. Welcome to our channel, Asul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and we're going to talk about dive tables. People have a lot of opinions about these dive tables, but it really is helpful to know what they are, how they work, how to use it for dive planning, and how modern diving has really evolved into what it is today. You know what also goes with dive planning? Dive logging. Stick through to the end of the video and you'll get a sweet discount on some beautiful waterproof dive log books from Diveproof. If you want to just work through an example with the RDP table, head to this timestamp right here. So we'll deal with the really obnoxious question, are dive tables worth understanding? Because dive computers have become so advanced, many divers don't put in the effort to learn about dive tables. They may be a little bit old school, but understand the theory behind dive tables will ultimately make dive planning a lot easier. And in worst case scenarios, when your dive computer fails and there aren't any backups available, it can help you finish a dive trip. I also really like having the knowledge behind the dive tables because when I'm brainstorming dive plans for a day, I, I have that knowledge and I can make logical choices for my dive sites. And this is one of the reasons for diving with a professional. They know the sites and can create a realistic dive plan for you. The three tables within the table. Within this one slate, you actually have three tables. One for the dive that you're about to do, a surface interval table, and the repetitive dive table. And by using them all together, you can get the information you need to do some conservative diving with a timing device and a depth gauge. How to plan dives. So we're gonna start out with this first section of the dive tables. If you're going for your first dive of the day, it's pretty simple. You're going to decide what depth is going to be your maximum depth and then you can use the table to find out how much time you can be at that depth. Now this dive time that you get is the max that you can do at that depth and you really don't want to push to the limits because then it's going to screw up your whole day if you want to go diving multiple times. So you want to make a plan that's a little bit less which makes the dive more conservative kind of a weird wordplay there. But what you're getting out of this is a letter. These letters are pressure groups. And these letters are kind of confusing for people. They represent the amount of nitrogen that's in your body. You know, you don't need to get real complicated into the theory of compartments and washout and all of this stuff that you'll get into if you do your dive master or instructor courses. Just know that it's a representation of how much nitrogen is in your body. So when you have that, you know that after that dive, you have that much nitrogen. Then you can take that letter and go for your surface interval. When we go through our surface interval, we are off gassing. So that means that we're going to have less nitrogen after a certain amount of time spent at the surface. So that's why we move into table two. We can either use it to plan how long we wanna stay out of the water, or we can check and see where we're at with our nitrogen levels after a certain amount of time. This is the table that makes your eyes kinda of go crossed and is a little hard to trace but you go through and you find your surface interval. Once you're done with your surface interval, you'll have your new nitrogen level, which will be represented by another letter, which will be higher on the alphabet. Higher on the alphabet means less nitrogen. Again, there's a lot of more or less conservative nitrogen duh, kind of all over the place, but just take some time and go through some examples. I'll link a couple in the description below, but it, it starts to make sense once you spend some time with it. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. 
Then if you want to plan on a repetitive dive, you're gonna to need to go to the third table. Now this one is another one that has lots of numbers and can be a little bit confusing. You have your depth. This is the depth that you want to go on for your repetitive dive, your next dive. Then at the top, we have the pressure groups. So it says at the very top, pressure group at the end of surface interval. So once you're done with the surface interval, you wanna use that letter. Okay, that pressure group. Now, when you look at this table, you have a white number and a blue number for each box where we connect our two points of interest. The way that I remember this is that the blue is like underwater. So this is the actual amount of time that you can spend under the water. The white number is the residual nitrogen that's left in your body after the surface interval. The way that we use this for dive planning is when we, we have a dive that we wanna do, we know the maximum depth that we wanna go to, we find our pressure group at the end of the surface interval. So when we look at those two, we find where they meet. We wanna look at the blue number and see what the max time is that we can actually be on that dive. And if that's within the dive plan that we want. If we look at this and we see that we can only be underwater for 10 minutes, then that's a problem, right? So we probably want to stay at the surface for a bit longer, off gas some more. If we look at these numbers and the blue number is actually within the range that we want for our next dive, then we look at the white number. Okay, we take that white number, bring that number over to the first table again. And with that number, we're gonna be able to figure out what our pressure group is gonna be at the end of the following dive and if it's gonna work with our dive plan. Here's some special rules for multiple dives. If you're planning three or more dives in a day and your ending pressure group is W or X, then the minimum surface interval between dives is one hour. Now, if you go even further and your pressure group at the end of that dive is Y or Z, then your minimum surface interval is three hours. That's why it's always good to check these things because you may screw up your whole day if you push the limits and get into that Y or Z range, you'll have to be out of the water for a long time. All right, let's walk through an example. Say we wanna to go to 55 feet and we need to know the max time we can be there. We'll round up to 60 feet since 55 isn't on the table. Following that column down the chart, we see the black number, 55 minutes. This is the max amount of time that we can be underwater for that dive. Now, it puts us in a pressure group of W, which qualifies as one of those special rules. Our body will have taken up a significant amount of nitrogen and our surface interval would have to be at least one hour. However, we're planning on multiple dives for the day, so we definitely don't wanna push it right from the start. So we decide on a 45 minute dive, which we see isn't on the table, so we round up to 47, and that puts us in the pressure group of S. We then move on to our surface interval table. We plan on being at the surface for one hour and 15 minutes. Finding that interval on the table, we follow it down the column and get our ending pressure group of E. We want to do our next dive at a site where our max depth is 45 feet. Go to the third table, dive planning. We round that max depth to 50 feet and find where E and 50 meet. We know based on the blue number that we can stay underwater for 59 minutes and have a residual nitrogen time of 21 minutes. We decide to do another 45 minute dive, so we go back to the first table. Add 21 minutes to 45 minutes to get a total of 66 minutes. This is your theoretical bottom time, which takes into account the nitrogen from your previous dive. Note, you're still only diving 45 minutes. Go to 50 feet on the first table and go down that column until you find 66. It's not there, so you round to 67. Note, gray boxes mean mandatory safety stop, although we tend to do safety stops on all dives just for good measure. Ending pressure group here is U. Now we want to do a third dive to the same dive site as the last one. Max depth of 45 feet, and we want to do the same dive time, so we need to find out how long we need to wait between dives. Go to the third table. Follow 50 feet again, but horizontally, until you find 45 in the blue numbers. It's not there, so you round to 47. Look at the top of the column and that gives you J. Head to table two. Find U from table one and J on table two and find where they meet. 
the range in this box is 45 to 50 minutes. So that means minimum surface interval would need to be 45 minutes. Got it? Okay, so we can plan a dive to a certain depth, but what about diving to different depths? With computers, we're used to multi-level diving, but with tables, we're pretty restricted to just our maximum depth. There is something in between, and I mentioned this just so that you know about it, but it's not a very common thing to see on dive boats. That is the ERDP, and this allows for multi-level dive planning. Most people really only play with these in their dive master and instructor courses, but I like to mention them just because it is another tool that's out there. It's just not something that people travel with or that stay on dive boats. Rounding and why computers are king. Let's say queen. As you've seen in the examples, the dives are relatively short. Most of the time when we go out diving now, we hit 45 minutes to an hour. So how is this possible? With dive planning and using tables, you're limited to the deepest depth that you go to. That means that even if you're planning to just touch that deepest depth, be there for a few minutes, your dive is gonna be limited by that point. Even if you spend the rest of the dive at nine meters, nine times three, or about 30 feet. <laughs> And this is why every diver really should be using a computer. Dive computers are constantly recalculating your no decompression limit, so that means that you get the most out of your dive when you're underwater. Check out the links in the description below to see some of our favorite beginner, intermediate, and advanced dive computers. All right, now we're gonna get into dive planning at altitude. I mentioned a little bit about this in our altitude diving video, but I wanted to get into some of the specifics around dive planning at altitude here. If you want to dive upon arrival at altitude, you need to account for your residual nitrogen, right? Because when you're coming from sea level and you're going to altitude, you're actually going to be off gassing as if you had just done like a dive, sort of. It's sort of the same idea. You do this by determining your pressure group. To get your pressure group at this altitude, when you arrive, you count two pressure groups for each 300 meters or 1,000 feet. After finding your pressure group, you can allow for a surface interval to reduce your residual nitrogen and start out your first dive of the day with less nitrogen in your system. By the way, you can completely avoid this part of the dive planning at altitude by just waiting six hours before you go diving. In any case, for dives over 2,400 meters, that's 8,000 feet, wait six hours no matter what. When we're using tables, we always round up to the next level. So in altitude diving, that's gonna be rounding up to the next higher altitude. And there's a different tool that comes into altitude diving and that is the theoretical depth table. If you're not really sure about theoretical depths and all of that, you can check out our altitude diving video that's linked in the description below. But basically you wanna find this theoretical depth and then you'll use it on your normal RDP tables. If you're doing a dive to 45 feet of depth at 4,500 feet of altitude, we round to 50 feet for our desired depth and 5,000 feet for our altitude. Then we find where they intersect and that is our theoretical depth or 59 feet. We then take this depth and use it to plan our dives on the RDP tables as before, but we keep our dive plan as maximum depth of 45 feet. And follow the same process as discussed previously in the video. Finally, we're gonna talk about nitrox. We'll be doing a full video on nitrox soon, so stay tuned for that. And if you're not already, hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you don't miss it. Nitrox, which is any gas blend that has over 21% oxygen, but is typically 32 or 36% oxygen, has its own tables. These tables are yellow and green, so they're really easy to distinguish from the other ones, and they're used in the same way. But just to give you a little preview as to why nitrox is so useful, check out these bottom times. You get a lot more bottom time when you're diving with nitrox. There's some safety factors to consider. So like I said, stay tuned for the full video on nitrox. All right, that about does it for me. So I wanna hear your opinion. Are tables worth understanding? Are they obsolete? Tell me in the comments below. And if you have questions about how to use the tables, also leave those in the comments below and we will get back to you with some 
dive theory clarification. But don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere just yet. Check out these sweet waterproof dive log books from Diveproof. Now back to our sponsor. Diveproof is a sweet little environmentally conscious company making durable log books that you don't have to worry about. The packaging is all plastic free, even the tape, and the log book itself is recyclable. That being said, these log books are so nice, you're not going to want to get rid of them. They're going to be keepsakes for a long time. If you want to get your hands on one of these sweet log books, use the code 15 asul for 15% off your order. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe for more scuba diving content. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next time. Oh, I'm hungry. I think it's lunchtime. Turn off the light. Turn off the light. Now it's off. <laughs> Bye.